So if you're like me, one of the things that you think is wonderful about our planet, among other things, is the fact that during the daytime we have these, our skies are blue. Our skies are blue during the daytime, and that's not the same, um, that's not the same case as if you were standing on, uh, on other planets. For instance, Mercury, um, it'd be really cold if you're in the nighttime side of Mercury and really hot if you're on the daytime side of Mercury. But aside from that, the skies on Mercury are not blue. The skies on our moon in the daytime on the moon are not blue. And it has to do, our blue skies have to do with the very relatively select scattering of one of the gases or a couple of the gases in the Earth's atmosphere. We said the Earth's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen followed by oxygen. Those are permanent gases, about 80-20. Um, they're always in about that same composition. But um, they're very selective for a particular wavelength of light. Specifically, of the visible light that's coming from the sun, it's the shorter wavelengths that are scattered by the presence of those gases. So if we write red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, as I've written that, the shortest wavelength is over here, the blue, indigo, and violet. And those particular wavelengths of colors, as they hit oxygen and nitrogen are kind of ping, 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 and you're going to kind of see it on the next um, figure here in a minute. So those wavelengths are preferentially scattered by the presence of these gas molecules in our atmosphere. Um, so that's why we see the Earth's sky during the day, those colors are kind of pinging around. Um, and I mentioned that if you're on the moon in the daytime, you don't see a blue sky. And the reason for that is you don't have much of an atmosphere, let alone nitrogen and oxygen, to go ahead and scatter those shortest wavelengths of visible light. So this is a pretty good, um, I think, slide kind of showing you um, what I was describing. Um, when the sun is overhead, remember we said that actually the rays are what we say most direct. Um, um, with the horizon, if it's 90 degrees, it has the shortest amount of the Earth's atmosphere to go through. So basically, we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet all coming from the sun. It interacts with nitrogen, N2, and O2 in the Earth's atmosphere. And can you kind of see the little pinging of these shorter wavelengths? Isn't that cool? Now, it's not all pinged out, because if it was all pinged out, um, if you were to go ahead and hold up something that is, say, blue color, you, you couldn't, there wouldn't be enough blue light. If there was no component of blue coming through, you wouldn't see that blue light reflected from that object. Now, when the sun is low on the horizon, and that happens every day at sunrise and every night at sunset, when you have a relatively small angle at sun, sunset or a small angle at sunrise, we talked about beam depletion, and we talked about the fact that, and beam spreading, but that the, the amount of atmosphere that that, that that sun rays have to go through is greater. And if it's greater, then basically what you have here early on is you do kind of have a ping, 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 upon ping, 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 and it's all kind of accumulative. And so the amount of um, the shorter wavelengths, the blue, indigo, and violet, that ultimately reach you after it goes through the thick atmosphere is, is, is affected. It's pretty, it's less. And so by the time um, the light gets to you, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but if you hold up like, a, or look at a, um, a, a, I want to say a stop sign, but like a, some sort of white sign, um, maybe a speed limit sign, and the sun's low on the horizon and it's shining on that sign, doesn't it kind of cast like a, it casts like a red or orangish glow to it. That's because the sun's low on the horizon, and by the way, they call this Raleigh scattering, like the previous slide said. It's very selective. Basically, those shorter wavelengths have been filtered out, and, and you're kind of holding a red flashlight to your, your sign. So, so that, in a nutshell, Raleigh scattering is what makes our skies blue, and when the sun is low on the horizon, it's Raleigh scattering that kind of scatters out all that blue, indigo, and violet, and leaves our um, the sky. Then appears to take on those longer wavelength of colors. Um, yeah, 
And I think I mentioned this before, um, around here in the fall, when the uh, farmers are harvesting their crops, um, we can almost have, we can potentially have an extra dose of particulates, dust, you know, because they've been harvesting their crops. Um, and aerosols, like dust, can actually then, when the sun is low on the horizon, they can make just a, a more spectacular, colorful sunrise or sunset. As seen here. Isn't this beautiful? Oh. <laughs> One other thing with regard to scattering of light I'm going to talk about is crepuscular. And I know that sounds like an icky word, but crepuscular rays are very pretty. Crepuscular rays will happen when the sun is low on the horizon, although not terribly low, but relatively low. And what you need between the sun and the viewer is some sort of irregularly shaped object. Clouds like this work great. A mountain would work. And what you see is, um, is a multiple, let's see, it's a non-selective type of scattering, where basically all colors of light from the sun are being scattered, and they're kind of giving that milky white ray appearance. And I know it looks like these, these rays kind of converge at the sun, doesn't it? They look like they're kind of coming together at the source. But that's kind of a, um, an optical illusion a little bit. Um, actually, they are all parallel to each other instead of kind of converging to an angle. And it's very similar, I've heard it put, like if you um, are looking down a railroad track, right? And you know that those, those two tracks for the railroad are parallel from here all throughout the, out its journey or where the tra train's going to have to travel. But if you look straight down the track, you'll see the tracks converge, and that's kind of what we have here, too. It's, it's kind of a neat little optical illusion. So crepuscular rays, um, non-selective scattering, and it has to do with an irregularly shaped object like the clouds and the mountains and the sun's on the other side. These would make great photos for your photo projects.